The moment is here, you can stop your search. It's Comics by Perch. Hey everybody, this is Perch. I don't have any witty banter uh, for the beginning this time. It's it's too early. Like, I'm up driving around. I mean, I look, look I, you're listening to this video later in the day. Uh, for me, it's 5 a.m., so it's too it's too early to be up like this. I, I don't know. Um, I don't sleep much anyway, but uh, let's do it. What does cult success mean is the mail. It says, uh, hey, everybody's Perch. Wait, that's your line. Sorry. Anyway, the question relates uh, to as well as to comics as it does to movies. I'm willing to bet that, like me, many of your favorite movies and comics were flops. They didn't sell north of 30000 off the rack at a, in a time when 50000 was mid and they didn't make their money back at the box office. Uh, and that's true. I mean, I mentioned on this channel before, I'm a big fan of David Lynch. Uh, David Lynch, um, you know, you could argue that David Lynch isn't out to make a giant Hollywood blockbuster, but definitely he's been put in a position to do things that, that did not, you know, work. And there's been plenty of movies that were flops. Um, I, not to, you know, tempt fate and beat the uh, Snyder fans with it, but uh, uh, Sucker Punch was a fun to look at movie, a weird train wreck of a movie, but still uh, enjoyed it. That movie, as I recall, uh, underperformed for sure. And right now in, in Hollywood, I mean, we are in a state where, you know, for movies in general, uh, the model has been shifted because I think we had COVID, people invested more in their home theaters, uh, movie theaters in general got, got a little stranger. Um, it, you know, the, the whole really predictable model of going to the movies has changed. And I'm not talking about any of the uh, social consciousness or topics like that. It fundamentally, it's it's a different ball game than it used to be. And so, you know, the the way that people could pr predict if a movie is going to do well or not has been broken. And a lot of that is just the business has shifted and the uh, output to the business hasn't caught up. So there, there's there's a lot of different pieces going on. I think that's true largely with comics as well. Every now and then I see somebody post something like all the comics are trash. And, and they, that, that's clearly not even remotely true. There are good comics that are coming out. Uh, I've mentioned before, I mean, just to pull one completely out of the air, uh, Ragnarok that uh, Simonson did was a damn good comic. The Last God uh, was a really good comic uh, published by DC Black Label. Uh, th these are good books. They underperformed for sure. You can say, you know, oh, it's it's because that people are frustrated with comics. I mean, you can make a lot of different statements about it. But one thing that is completely and absolutely true is the business has shifted. You know, fewer people are going to the direct market. Fewer people know it exists. There is no newsstand. The you know book brick and mortar books in general are off. Uh, Amazon has admitted that the book and by nature comic book business, all of that is, uh, is tougher than it used to be. Now, Amazon started with books and they're saying it's tougher than it used to be. And they're saying it's tougher than it used to be because just people are, are buying differently. Habits have shifted. They haven't figured out digital. So, so we're, we're in this state where a lot of things have moved around. And so when products come out, we are seeing more and more flops. We're seeing more and more things that are using the old way of kind of assessing how much should we spend on this movie. I mean, hell, Indiana Jones is probably a good example of this, among many reasons. I know the Kathleen Kennedy reason, all the rest, but taking that out of the picture, you know, the the rationale behind spending the you know budget and marketing behind Indiana Jones, um, you know, it 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 they they did something very typical, very predictable, very, you know, in the, in the old days would have been, you know, a very uh, non-controversial move to spend that much money. Mission Impossible, the brand new one, uh, same thing. It's unlikely to make its money back when you factor in marketing now. I know on this channel, I predicted that, hey, Indiana Jones probably would make money and everything else. I was wrong. It is underperforming significantly. Uh, so is Mission Impossible. So are a lot of films. People are, are right now saying, well, Barbie is definitely going to crush it. Barbie's going to do it. I, I mean, maybe they're putting, again, a lot of marketing into it. It's kind of a different vehicle, a different beast of a film. But I, I suspect 
word of mouth on Barbie is going to be pretty rough. We'll see. I, I don't know. Again, I may be completely wrong, wrong again. But the key here is, I think if Indiana Jones, uh, this new one, had come out, you know, pre-COVID, 2018, 2019, I think it would have been a very different story, even if it was the exact same movie. Because I think the world has shifted, and I don't think things have gone along with it. But anyway, back to the, the mail. It says, but many of, these com- <clears throat> many of these comics and movies became cult hits, and that cult status has a very mixed rate of turning into success. Just for example, both Blade Runner movies are flops. Even though by the time 2049 was made, the first one was considered a legendary film. But the public evidently had as much interest in the second as the first. Inter- that's an interesting story there. I mean, it, it is true. Uh, Blade Runner, the first, did make a ton of mo- money on the aftermarket. And again, we're, you're about to talk about that in the mail, so we'll get to that in a second. So Blade Runner, I, I think, is not considered a flop at this stage. Uh, you know, it's obviously been out for a long time. The second one, it was considered under form. I think the second one was a case of, in my opinion, um, nobody asked for this. Now, what I mean by that is um, the first Blade Runner worked. Like it was a movie, people felt comfortable in the story, they liked it, they didn't want a sequel, they didn't need a sequel. They got one anyway. Um, so I think that's a case of like misreading the audience. But anyway, let's, let's continue. It says, in the olden days, a movie's failure could be salvaged by DVD sales. In comics, it's the same with trades and omnibuses, sort of. But my question for you is, uh, without my question is, without those sales, does being a cult hit really count for much at all? Does the comic industry ever have a moment where they're like, uh, oh shit, everyone is still praising this one comic story from 1986 that didn't sell very well. What's the writer of that doing these days? And they do. Yeah, comic industry does do stuff like that. But not not for not for a good reason. They will do that like, hey, remember this thing that I read when I was uh, in college that really had an impact on me that didn't sell at all? My God, we should uh, build an entire main character around that. Yeah, it's, it is, that is weird. And does the capitalist in you, back to the mail, say that these cult hit writers should get more work or should they have to prove the value of their work to reprint sales and stuff? Uh, what's the perch method when quality doesn't translate into sales? Well, I mean, first of all, I think, you know, it's important to note that being a cult hit doesn't necessarily mean it was quality. Um, you know, cult hits are things that land with a, you know, niche of an audience and uh, they they go all in on it. Sometimes it's uh, the movie's brilliance is recognized later, or the comic's brilliance is recognized later. Uh, believe it or not, uh, and and I had a hard time buying this because it goes against what I believe. Uh, but I did enough research to look back and, and indicate it's true. The Daredevil Born Again storyline uh, was something that picked up more traction later. In the moment, it it wasn't considered the big hit and the big kind of you know epic thing that it that it is today. That's a case where there was really good writing and good characterization, and and there was a a great story there, but it didn't, uh, it didn't go out to the newsstand that way. And we have a bunch of reasons for that. I mean, arguably that story and the content was just not really, you know, something that is a casual reader going to the newsstand would enjoy. You know, if you're in the grocery store, just thumbing around through comics as a kid, would Daredevil born again be, would it be, uh, <laughs> that's probably not going to pull you like other things. Um, but that's a comic where trades and reprints and other things really kind of boosted the sales, got things back, and and gave the chance for the writer to be considered brilliant. Um, you know, in terms of kind of other aspects of uh, cult hit films, uh, there's, you know, I, or, or comics. I mean, there's plenty of stuff where it gets to be a cult hit. It's still not good. I mean, The Room. The movie, The Room, uh, it's not a good movie. It is a cult hit, but I wouldn't say quality has any bearing in that thing. And that's just kind of how, you know, how, how it shook out. So for me, I think if you get something that is a cult hit, I don't think it, uh, the, the goal should be run off and uh, you know, quickly hire the writer and, and you know, put a bunch of money into it and, and all that kind of stuff. I, I think that's, that's not a, a good plan. 
I think, you know, it does need to prove itself out in trades and in reprints and in other things in order for, you know, you to sink more cash into it and, and, you know, really kind of go further with that writer. I mean, another idea, another example of a cult hit is, uh, and, and again, so you're going to cringe, Gabby Rivera's America is considered a cult hit. It is not a hit. It didn't make, um, it didn't make money. Uh, it, it was, uh, nobody who read that would believe that was a quality title, but it's, it's considered that because it's something to kind of point and laugh at. It becomes a, you know, I mean, Rocky Horror Picture Show as a film got a lot of popularity from people wanting to act out the scenes. They weren't acting it out because they thought it was Shakespeare. They were acting it out because it was campy and goofy. That's, that's, you know, so it became a fun kind of event. So I, I think, you know, for me, I, I think you do need to separate. Is it something that is kind of uh, a cult, you know, lol cow, or is it a actual like financial success? It just came later. I mentioned this in the other video, and I think it still largely is true. Indiana Jones as a film underperforming in the theater is still IP that Disney is going to monetize through the aftermarket. You know, yeah, through digital. I suspect it will do fairly well. Um, uh, not again, not a hit, but I think it'll do fairly well with with digital. I know that a lot of uh, you know big companies like the airlines and stuff like that have already kind of pre ordered, and so they're they're making money uh, that way. Um, there's going to be I, it, there there would just Indian they'll be able to sell it in a box. That there's going to be a long tail on that because it is part of a franchise that is recognizable. The character is is known, and they can hype it up as kind of the complete set of Indiana Jones. And so I, I think you, you will see, you will see that, that that thing will make more money. The Mission Impossible film, which is which is also apparently underperforming, is uh, at least their expectations. Um, it's also one of those ones that's likely to make money on the aftermarket. So, you know, if, if it has legs, you know, for the capitalist in me says, you know, you, you, you place those bets. And I think in terms of comics and movies and all types of media, we are going to see you know more companies think about the entire picture and it you know and and not just you know what what can it be made what can be made in the box office it is going to be you know what where you know how how is it going to make money later where else can it benefit the franchise all all this kind of stuff uh, for comics you know once the trade paperback and digital strategy get worked out a little bit better there will be a lot of here's how we spend money that way so you you will see things shift but it will take time for sure um, anyway, thank you very much for the question. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Uh, like and subscribe. Yes, you should still subscribe and tell your friends. Why not? Enjoy the party till the end. Thanks for listening.